Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Mountain Blade 2 Bandlord news. Today we have an article posted by PC Gamer. Um, I, I, I saw this I saw this this morning. I had to go to work. I had to I had to go to work thinking about this. Oh my god, it looks stunning. Um, I'll be talking about this. I'll be reading through it and looking at the screenshots and um, then I'll get my thoughts about it at the end. So to start off, we have these two bubbles behind the background. First of all, we got graphics. It says, the, the original was not a pretty game. I personally thought Mantle Blade Warband was okay. Bandlord looks far nicer and is packed with incidental detail. And as you can see in the background, I'll talk about it more at the end, but we can obviously see how good it looks. I'll go into detail later on. Um, another one, we have strategy. The world map functions much like before, which is, which, which is nice to hear. Um, it's just you, your horse, and a map full of towns and soldiers. Ooh, that sounds good. Anyway, and need to know, we got release date, oh well, we got, we got a release year, you could say, 2016, but we already knew that, developer, tail worlds, publisher, in-house, and link, whatever, and we got the title, uh, cool, now, what's next? Tail Worlds has a difficult job ahead of it, Mountain Blade Warband is a cult RPG classic, it's ugly, why do they keep calling Mountain Blade Warband ugly? That's quite insulting, guys, I'm just saying. But offers unrevealed depth in regards to player freedom. Of course it does. It's a, comple it's a complex game. Eh, yeah, sort of. I don't really think it's complex. Anyway. But falters through an unwieldy interface and a tutorial that isn't fit for purpose. For Mountain Blade 2 Bandlord, accessibility is a big deal. Ooh, big deal. And that means balancing the needs of an existing, passionate community. Oh. Oh, that's quite nice, they call us passionate. Um, with, a, with a desire to um, attract and welcome a greater number of people. Of course, you know, um, it would be great for me as well as a as a, as a YouTuber um, to get a bigger audience. Uh, of course, that's what that's our main goal is to get a bigger audience and, you know, and achieve greatness. But um, yeah, of course, I think Banlord will bring in, some, bring in some new people. But of course, you know, Mountain Blade veterans, you know, we all, we're always going to be that one step ahead. Existing Mountain Blade players will be able to hit the ground running. Ah, oh, okay, that's cool. If I hit the ground, I can just run. Nah, that's not what it means. Rather than fill Banlord with new features, Tail World is focused on expanding and improving existing systems. Awesome. I've actually mentioned this when I watched uh, the gameplay from, I think it was Gamescon, that um, it's important that they don't change the game too much. Obviously, we, we, we want new things because, you know, we want a new game, but um, some of the main features we, we want to still be in there. Anyway, where was I? Once again, you're able to forge your own destiny. Ooh, very nice. As a merchant, landowner, arena champion, local hero, or nefarious bandit. Whatever that word means. I've never heard that in my life. Greater complexity. I hate saying that word. Wow. But these options exist within a much smoother and more in-depth framework. The, the simulation of economy and politics is more accessible for a better UI and more complicated under the service. Another important part of Warband is the mod scene. Yes! Yes! Well, we sort of knew that they were obviously... Oh, I think... Speaking for Tail Worlds, I think it's obvious that they know that the reason why Mountain Blade Warband was so successful was because of the modding community keeping the game alive and keeping it interesting to this date. Um, anyway, for, for Bannerlord, Tail Worlds is doubling down the mod support. Oh baby, oh yes. The new engine that we have is so much easier to work with for modders. Well, I'm sure the modders will appreciate that. Says uh, Yevers. Is that how you say his name? I'm not even sure. Anyway, we'll be supporting multiple mods together. Ooh, very nice. So players will be able to cherry pick the mods that they want and use them to uh, use them all together to exactly customize their experience. If, for example, one changes the user interface, another edits some items, and another... Is Another is some political thing. Players will be able to combine those and play their dream game. Is it just me or did anyone get a boner? Is that, is that just me? No? No? Okay, cool. cool. It's just, just me. I think our basic solution will be the main storyline, says Tail World's founder. Uh, um, uh, Amagan Yavas. I'm so sorry. We want to... We, we, want, well, yeah. we want to preserve the sandbox feeling of the game. At the same time, making it more accessible. The best way to do that, I think, is to make a storyline so that the player, when they start, has various goals, as a quest, and knows what to do, how to proceed. Cool. Once they progress a little bit, and know how to play the game, 
then the storyline should take a back step and give the player general goals and options. Sounds good already, sign me up, I've still, you know, my boner is raging on, it's gone through my desk, it's gone through my mic, well not really, anyway, let's, let's, let's keep going. Players will be able to cherry pick the mods they want, that they want, fuck. Okie dokie, so now that we've read it all, and our boners are rock hard, like a tree, like a fucking tree, like the trees in the background actually, let's start talking about the background, now the main thing to talk about is the horseman. Now, let's point him out, he looks, I don't know, he's got face paint, he's wearing some kind of leather armour, looks very nice, his horse also has the same type of armour, being like leather, I would assume, um, that's another thing to point out, we do know that you can get horse armour and equip it and buy it from places, he's got a giant fucking axe on his back, which has gone through his horse, the poor thing, it's so big, it's gone through the horse, and he's probably wielding that's probably a sword i'm hoping it's a sword let's try and keep this pg anyway now let's look at the grass we have some nice tall grass and you can definitely tell the shadows look amazing as you can see there's shadows from obviously from the bits of trees you know blocking bits of the sun um the distant view as well it looks amazing oh my god look at the tree detail you can see all the bark every single bit of bl of black black yes that's a new word now bark Wow, and looks amazing, and yes, and we also have a screenshot. Um, the potato face vaccine was was greatly appreciated. Okay, I'm not sure what that means, but anyway. Um, so we, the screenshot itself is a market from the looks of it, um, in some kind of city. And we have either the character, I don't know, one of the characters or a guard. It sort of looks like a guard, but it could be, it's, it's, he's wearing the same horse armor from the picture above, I believe. Or might be slightly different. Anyway, it looks slightly different, I think, on the head. Anyway, so that very well may be just the character just, you know, chilling in the market. Seems quite cool. And I think that's about it. I think I've gone through everything. This is pretty exciting. And um, apparently we're getting some more information in March, which is not that far away. So, um, yeah, guys, um, keep your pants down. Shit's gonna get real, guys. Um, Bandlord hype is still in the air. Well, it's been in the air for ages, I think. It's just the hype will never die, of course. Anyway, guys, um, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you think about this game, and as if, and I want to know if if you're ex as excited as, as as I am. Yes. Um, anyway, guys, uh, thank you for watching again, and I'll see you guys next time. Ta-ta for now.